Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome to Stage Crunchy and Milk. If you have opinions or queries you wish to share, we have multiple ways to be reached. The email address for the show is podcast, stagecrunchymilk.com. On Twitter, it's at SkimPod, S K I M P O D. Stage Crunchy. And if you're feeling froggy, go on and jump into our voicemail line at 216 3028 POP. That's 216 3028 763. The show can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and as always at our website, StageCrunchyMilk.com. Stage Crunchy. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show on your own social media feeds. And if you want to get at us directly, feel free to reach out via our personal Twitter. Stage. It's at Tatum216, Lunchbox2099, The Real ODP, and I'm your host, Tayrail713. Stage Crunchy and Milk. I had a story I wanted to say, but I forgot it. So, okay, Stay Scratch Milk, episode 270. I've, I've come, across, I've come upon 270 after we decided, I believe, last week that it was 269, parts A and B. So, 70 is where we are. Welcome to it. I'm joined by uh, the 216 Zone Table <laughs> 216, of course. And my man, Lunchbox 2099. It's about right. Righty-ho, neighbor. <laughs> Neighborino? Man, that's pretty funny. So, you know, like when I um, first start doing claw up. Fuck, I'm clicking my pen. Uh, but I <laughs> first, like, start messing with claw machines, like, heavy. The first thing I ever won was Ned Flanders. Uh, I hooked it, the glasses. It's funny, too, because um, I was actually going to talk about coincidences a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. This was Sunday night. Mm-hmm. I was laying in bed, uh, and I went on Instagram uh, before I went to sleep just to see, like, what the last couple things that had been posted were. Mm-hmm. And somehow I ended up on CM Punk's Instagram account. Mm-hmm. I think it was the new t- I, the new Walker Texas Ranger. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I was just more shocked that he had an Instagram account because of how reclusive he is. I didn't think he would have that that social platform. Mm-hmm. And uh, there wasn't a lot posted on it, but it was it was his. And I noticed one of the pictures posted was like album cover art for a band called Fratellis. Okay. And I was like, oh, shit. I haven't thought about them in years. Because, like, they had this one song. It's the only song I really know by them. Like, I, I haven't, like, listened to their whole discography or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but they had this one song, and it was, like, <clears throat> I want to say, like, 2007-ish, around that time, that when it was out. And uh, it was called Flathead. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, watching the music video for it, uh, and just... It was like they're like a European rock band, not kind of like um, uh, what was it like the, the the bands that were big in the two thousands? It was like the Strokes like, and all that. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're not yeah, not like like power rock, but like that like two guys Poppy with a rock. guitar with one one guy on drums and the, yeah, the fast so, tempo like stripped down rock. Yeah, like leather jacket in a nightclub, like smoking cigarettes, long hair type rock. Yeah, that kind of shit. Or like uh, wearing like dress shoes and my jeans and like you know. <laughs> so um, they had that that song and I used to listen to that song like all the time. And I remember it was when I first was like the internet was big, but it wasn't to the point where it is now where you could find something like instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Like this was around the time where like sometimes things a little more obscure. You had to do a little more digging. And I remember like there was this one model in the video. And I had spent some time trying to figure out, find out who she was. Yeah. Because I was like, man, this woman is hot. But at, like, it was like one brunette and two blondes. And obviously, I had no interest in the blondes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was like, man, who is this brunette? So I remember like trying to find it. And I remember one day, I, like, I finally found it on like a message board somewhere. And so um, I, I, like, I, I took a little stroll down memory lane on that one. Mm-hmm. And then last night after bowling... I, uh, I told my buddy that I would buy him dinner because Monday, when we got off work, he came over and he helped me out and he cut my front yard mm-hmm. while I like did some laundry and got some stuff done because my grass was like so ha- tall mm-hmm. and I was starting to feel like my neighbor was going to judge me <laughs> <laughs> because he takes such good care of his lawn. Like every Sunday, he like cuts it and the neighbors on my right, not so much. They're they're like it's like they wait for me to cut mine. Oh yeah, that, so they won't look bad. Yeah, and then they. Like, cut oh, no, it's- I better do it. They're going to make me look bad. That's how the lady next door to me do, too. Yeah. So, like, I knew it needed done. And it had kind of, like, rained a couple times mm-hmm. last weekend. And, like, it's, it's, like, real hard to cut that grass when it's wet. Yeah. It chokes up the lawn more. Yeah. So, 
it didn't get done last weekend. And I was going to try and see if I could hold out for the week, but I knew it like it needed done. <laughs> you know what always fucked me up? <laughs> that one weed. That's that one, thing. Yeah, that there one like weed that grows all this It's taller than everything else, yeah. and it makes it look way worse than it is. When I go, I just go on that bitch and go stump, or stump on it. That's like, why this is the first year where like, I'm going to put down some, like, uh, some shit in the fall, mm-hmm. like some preventative stuff for next year. I'm actually going to make an effort to try and like make it decent for next year. Yeah, like, um, I know you, well, I know you're pretty savvy at this kind of stuff, but find, like, a, um, a used, uh, weed pusher, mm-hmm. like, uh, like, you just pour, pour the bag in there in the bag. Oh, you're talking about, like, a seed thrower? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so I told him I would buy him dinner for helping me out, because usually, like, I, he, I give him, uh, free usage of my washing machine and dryer, because, mm-hmm. uh, the apartment he's in only, I think, has a dryer right now. Mm-hmm. But I think they washed their clothes at the laundromat the other day, so he didn't need to do his laundry, but he was still going to help me out. Um, so I told him I'd buy him dinner, and uh, we had bowling league last night. So, I, you know, when bowling was over, I said, you know, like, I'm like, hopefully we get out early enough, and I'm like, we can go over to Penn Station, and I'll just buy you a sub. Because I'm like, I, was, I wanted the artichoke sandwich. Yeah, that would be good. And, about, uh, why yeah. you still eat that sandwich, man? <clears throat> Dude, I really like that sandwich. I used to get the, the Philly steak one, but now it's like it's been exclusively the artichoke one for the last like ten times I've gone there. And we used the Thursday show and we come from come from work. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We used to cop the artichoke joint. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy it. That's actually the um, I, the chicken the um, when I went had dinner at my buddies the other night, uh, they made paninis and it was chicken artichoke paninis. Nice. Yeah. And so they're like, Do you like artichoke? I was like, Oh, this is gonna be easy. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we didn't get out of bowling in time to go to Penn Station. They like we got out of bowling like as Penn Station closed, and I didn't want to go to Chipotle because I'd eaten that the night before. So I offered up sheets to him because it's, like, it's quick. It's right by the house, and uh, they have you know a wide variety of things. Whether yeah. they're good for you or not, they have I- options. Yeah. So we went there, and when we walked into the place, what should be on the fucking radio at Sheets? But that Fratella song <laughs> that I, had, I hadn't thought about in years until two days prior, I walked in and I'm like, what the fuck? So I like I had gone like probably eight years without even thinking of that song or hearing that song. And in the span of 48 hours, I see the cover art on Instagram, look the song up on YouTube, add it to Spotify, and then the next day, boom, it's playing at the gas station restaurant. Yeah, life is funny like that. <clears throat> I love when, when stuff falls back into the zeitgeist. Like, especially, I don't know, you've been feeling like, you feel like you got, like, damn your superpowers, but, like, especially, like, you've been thinking about something, like, I was just thinking about this the other day, and all of a sudden it just pops up, because it happens, it happens so frequently with us, you know, all the time we'll say something on the show, and it'll just show, it'll show up, you know, that's been our thing for a while now, so I dig, I dig the little quicky dinks of the world, I don't know, it, just, it pays off, it makes you feel kind of good about yourself, like, that's wild. Hey, and, and, yeah, coming back to the Ned Flanders, so, before we left, a home, me and my me and my sons. Anthony was like, "Hey, uh, what's up? Why is Ned Flanders in your room? Ned Flanders is ours." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> like what?" He's like, "Ned Flanders is ours. Tonight, I want uh, you got to bring him out here so we can watch TV with him." I was like, "Okay, whatever, man. It's ours." <laughs> it's insane. It's crazy how that goes down. I guess it's all ours. I'm saying. I, I find it enjoyable. How, like, when you uh, run back your conversations with your sons with us. Oh, okay. How you make it sound like like you're, you're two-year-old or whatever. Or, or is he three now? Yeah, he's three. 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 It's just sitting there having these, like, frank heart-to-hearts with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, look, like, look, Dad. Uh, but yeah. it, but does it in such a, like, a professional, stern yeah. manner. Yeah. Like, yeah. look, I don't want to have to tell you again to bring Ned Flanders <laughs> out here. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's quite, like, he's quite the individual. Like, last night, um... Um, my girlfriend's cousin came over to um, install us some um, some lights in the um, like uh, solar lights, and then I was like, um, <laughs> when he came over, he was pooping. I was like, I'll be, we'll be out in a minute, like um, um, Antoine, and then um, Anthony was like, who's that? I'm like that's your cousin Antoine. I was like, oh, okay. I said, remember he was in. In the basement, uh, fixing on something, and you w- want to keep going down there, and give him f- fist bumps. He said, I-, "I don't remember that." I said, "Okay." And so uh, when he get outside, he's like, "Hey, ain't you my cousin?" 
<laughs> he was like, yeah. No, that's not what he said. He said, hey, do you have any cousins? He was like, yeah, you're my cousin. He said, I know, you're my cousin too. And then, like, that, he just, like, follows him around the house and stuff like that. And, um, you know, was giving him grass to play with. Um, he's a he's a fairly interesting kid. Um, it was funny. Um, you that coffee mug that you gave me for my birthday. Yeah, I was I had to explain to people around me the like, significance was the, of of the coffee mug. Yes, they're like, why would he give you that? So like I was like, oh, it's because his kids call me Dino Dan. Di- <laughs> well, so well, your your full name was Dino Dan Bobak. Um, <laughs> my son puts a B in front of everything, in front of different words. And I was like, um, "See how he blooding in these streets?" Yeah, he's a blood. He's definitely not a crip. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was. I, just, I thought, first of all, I know you like dinosaurs, mm-hmm. and you don't have a mug at your desk. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I ever drink out of a mug like ever. And I, I was thinking, I probably I, have a couple in my cupboard at home, but they probably came with the dishes. Yeah. So like, they're not like any like personalized mugs of any kind. They're just the generic black ones that came with the dish set. It, it kind Because of, it kind of started with T because, like, I remember T had a, a Curious George mug that kept on breaking. And the pen, the, uh, which is a watch pen, right? Mm-hmm. It keeps on popping out of it. So I was like, I'm just going to get him a mug every year. And then I had I had some mugs. I'm like, I think this, this mug doesn't say T. It says Dan. <laughs> And I got a, uh, I got another mug for tea at home. And I was like, I'm gonna save that one because it's it's a good mug, but it's not a great mug. So I was like, I'll just save it for a while until it becomes a great mug. So that opportunity just like <laughs> just presents itself. There you go. I have a large collection of mugs on my desk now. I can't drink out of Transformers no more because like I dropped it in, in the kitchen at some point here at work. So it's chipped. So it's just art at this point. It's beautiful. I love that mug because it's got you know the Autobot sitting on it. Don't use Curious George no more again because the pen. But also, I've had that mug for like probably pushing through twenty years. So it's it probably it's, like. it's probably got like uh, you know how um, they say you when you cook uh, in a cast iron skillet, mm-hmm. like iron comes <laughs> out of it still. Like so, if you're like iron deficient, c- cook in the cast iron skillet. Like they probably have so much coffee and tea, you just probably put water in there and like shake it up real good. <laughs> like I got some tea. I got that mug when it used to be what store that, 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 that became like it wasn't a Warner Brothers store no more. It came like so, like it became basically like a universal store right after that, mm-hmm. and then it was just a dollar store, or whatever after that. So I got it from when it was the universal store, and so I didn't have that mug for like except for just fucking forever. Yeah, mug, so. mug is one of those interesting things that like we were talking yesterday about um, like products going out of fashion or like like the right time to buy. Mugs are either really expensive or really cheap. Like it's one of those things like um, you gotta hop on it when you see it because. Um, it's one of those things that people undercover love. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it was this one mug I seen the other day. It was like a battery powered um, Darth Vader mug, and like you push the button and it'll spin it, and uh, it is like I guess mix up Mixed your cocoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen videos like yeah with the the, the mixer cups or yeah. whatever. Yeah, like that. That's one of those kind of things. Like, I'll buy it for you, but I won't buy it for myself. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I. Would I don't want know if to. I'd want a mug that like I couldn't really use it anymore. Like once it breaks down, because like I'm yeah. not gonna repair it. Yeah, it's like so um, once the batteries run down, you probably ain't gonna use it no more. You know, <laughs> just in there like no, nah, like the battery is an easy <laughs> thing, but like there's gotta be like a little motor on it. That mm-hmm. thing's gonna break at some point. Yeah, I mean, imagine having a freak accident like you bought your friend that, and like you, you know, or wife. And like she drinking it and the spinner come out like splash like right, right like getting right in her throat. I was going with it splash hot fluids up. In oh yeah, that that, that could happen too. Um, the likely scenario. <laughs> shit, who knows? Uh, a dude came through with. Um, I, I think he's our our product guy, um, like that brings coffee and uh, yeah, yeah. tea to our office. So he has what he says is a maximum overdrive tattoo. Okay. But it is the Green Goblin. I said, oh, that's a nice Green Goblin. He's like, no, it's the dude from Maximum Overdrive. Who is the Green Goblin? Who is the Green Goblin? Yeah. So I was like, uh, that's the man. It's, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a nice tattoo. But, um, yeah, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, but, yeah, it was. it's the same thing. And oh yeah, I remember why I said that because I've always been afraid of 
Not Max. Have you guys seen Maximum Overdrive before? No. Okay. But sorry, it, I'm sorry I let you down. Yeah. I saw the look of disappointment in his face. No. He pointed at me and he turned his head to the right like he couldn't look at me anymore. <laughs> I don't know if it went that far, but like I don't even really expect like um. It had the, the feel of this motherfucker. I knew Maximum, I couldn't count on him for this. I, I'm gonna say you're wrong for two reasons. One is movie's pretty old. It's, it's older it, than you, for sure. Yeah, it's like a 1980-something movie. The only reason I've seen it is because, like, I thought because of the Green Goblin on that truck. And that movie fucking freaked me out to this day because, like, out of all the things that fuck up electric, like, it's just like all the electronics are coming back to haunt you. But it was a toaster that attacked people, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I should probably try to watch that movie again. But like, 86 is a little younger than you, but only a little. <laughs> what was the movie with all the little alien robot things? Um, no oh, Batman's Batman's in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that's that's more up your alley. I've it's seen like, that. It's like heartwarming. They used to play that all the time at like midnight on Channel 5 when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, so, so. I really miss uh, my... Watching big, when you, it seems like when you don't have cable, you're a little kid. Your day is scheduled out perfect. You know everything that's coming on TV. You never bored. When you got cables, like, um, I felt like more bored than ever. Well, like when I was a kid with cable, I would like post up on a channel, and like that's where I would stay like the entire day. Mm-hmm. Like when I was in elementary school, and I was home alone a lot during the summer. Yeah, I would just put on Nickelodeon in the morning. I watched like. Gullah Gullah Island and yes. shit like that. Gullah Gullah Island was pretty good. Yeah, and then the afternoon would be like part cartoon for a little bit, and then it would go to like the teenager type shows like Hey Dude and <laughs> Salute to my shorts. Yeah, that show was pretty good. I still use Smooth Move X like in my in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I say it to anybody, yeah. but like. I still think and about that. And then around that. like six o'clock time, it would be like the game shows, like Double Dare and figure it out and uh, hit Legends of the Hidden yeah, Temple yeah. and stuff like that. Man, I wish I miss one of those motherfuckers would grab me in the Hidden Temple. Now get off me. <laughs> I'm getting this prize. <laughs> I always wanted to be on that show. It always tripped me out, though. Like, the one teammate is out there watching the other one go the whole way. <laughs> and then, like, they get caught by the, the, the temple guard. Mm-hmm. And then the other person runs it, and they can't figure out which way to go. You just watched your partner <laughs> go through the whole thing. Just go the way he went, do what he did, and you're good. Just, just keep it moving. Yeah. Like, I, uh, like I wish I, uh, you know, not that we live in a terrible state, but I wish we had had, like, some opportunities to be on Double Dare and shit like that. They were coming here. Like, like a couple weeks ago, I saw the, the article. They, they rebooted <laughs> it with, like, some of the new millennial, yeah. like, Vine YouTube people. And they were coming here for auditions. Yeah, Double Dare is now uh, Eliza Koshy. I don't know if you ever watched her YouTube. She's very funny. My, my daughter loves her. Host she's Double she's Dare the now. one that's with the, the one No, they kid. broke up. Oh, they broke up, <laughs> They man. broke up and had a crying-ass breakup video on YouTube. Oh. Like, together? Yeah. <laughs> man, they're kind of break up kind of shit. Man, they new, broke age, up new, new age breaking up. If you're going to break up, you might as well do it. For, you might as well get paid for it. Yeah, man. That's funny, too, because it was, like, two, three years of them, like, oh, I love you, I love you back, and they're, like, on everything together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just don't believe in that, uh, like, in that kind of relationship, but... I just don't get, like... I guess because I never had, like, an audience of people who watch every fucking thing I do, yeah. mm-hmm. where I felt like if I was going through a breakup, I'd have to get on camera with the person I'm breaking up with and explain to these people. But I think it's because the fan mob becomes so yes. irrational. They will quickly they will become attack, your enemy. Yeah, they will attack the other person. So if it's not if it's an amicable breakup, it's probably the smart play now that I'm, I'm talking about it out loud. I think, what, well, what I've also seen is people, um, <clears throat> Twitch streamers, will just go about their business and not mention their personal life, but it'll come <laughs> out some way, shape, or form that they got a man. And dudes be wild and wild. Why? What do you mean you have a boyfriend? You should have. You should have told us this. You should have let us know because because why? Oh yeah, like Kristen Ledlow okay. got engaged like two three weeks ago. I don't even know who that is. She's the the NBA sideline reporter, the blonde chick. Um, okay. I mean, she has, she's she's an NBA sideline reporter. Yeah. Killer enough. <laughs> so um, yeah, she posted a couple weeks ago like. Uh, that she got engaged yeah. and she lost like 8,000 followers that one night <laughs> so the next day she's like 
Uh, I'm sorry to the 8,000 of you that unfollowed me because you realize that you and I will never be together. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a weird mindset that, that people have. They, they, they lay claim to people, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, that's probably why the smart move is let's, let's do this together. They might have been broke up for whatever. I don't know. They was really balling on that video. <laughs> it it, it might have got real real. <laughs> And the more uh, the more crowds, probably the more cash you probably get. Uh, people, yeah, because probably people, you, you, you get more views, and that, that AdSense money will, will rack up at some point. Yeah, I think um, most people is like like unless like uh, you know you're with an it girl or something like that. Most people really don't say who they with for the yeah. most part. Because no, I mean, it's just it's just it's just not get it girl or guy. It's just it's kind of unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the, what's the point of me telling you all about all of this? We share our lives with you to a degree, but you don't know all what's going on in the world. And so, I don't know, man. They're kind of got to do for me. No, 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 they, don't. Really. no they don't. There's, there's not really. like not like the finer finer details, but they got a good gist. The finer details are the ones that matter the most, and I, and I like that you keep them to your chest. And I can say we don't try to put them out there. It's just not. It's just no, not I think do. you 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 paint with a, a pretty broad brush, you like cats. Um, even though you, uh, you tell about your personal life, your bowl, your homeowner, <laughs> but they don't know what they don't know if you got a duplex. I mean, <laughs> they don't know. If, like it's a pretty broad brush. Yeah, right. um, I'm pretty sure they actually do know that I don't have a duplex because <laughs> I talked about how I like ranch houses. Oh man, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've described like. But at that point, you have to ask somebody who is listening to everything yeah. and kept, and kept uh, uh, you know whatever of that. So. Yeah, so well, now they know now. So the sleeper hit knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he the homie, so it's, it's well, I mean, like, shit, I'm friends with him on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, he know. Like, see, that's the dude who got some real deep, deeper ties to your existence. <laughs> a bit, a bit. Shout out, Gabriel. <laughs> Not the missing one. Yeah, but, but the, the one in Cali. <laughs> that Cali loves. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, there's levels to this shit, and it's like, and it's not because I'm like. One, it's like it's hard to, you know, get that deep into the water sometimes. Like, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit here. Let me tell you about my day. Well, I woke up this morning at this time, could not stay asleep, had to take a leak, so forth and so on. I'm, like, I'm not going to give you all that because this is purposeless. So, but I will tell you right quick about my kid going to homecoming, which I was pretty hyped about. It's pictures, man. He's grown, ain't he? Yeah. He got he got grown so fast. Yeah. I don't even know what to do with it, man. He got a little uh, little, little dust of a mustache. <laughs> Uh, what really kept my kid hyped about homecoming throughout all of the things with the, 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 the lady, his ex, or whatever the hell that situation is, is he got a dope ass fucking uh, what's the double C brand uh, 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 uh designer? I don't know the See, uh, Chanel. Okay, he got a dope Chanel ass belt <laughs> for like player price. But that's a found him a, a, a Chanel belt and at, 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 uh, at Macy's. I guess it's Chanel. I'm gonna have to double check that. It might be. Because he, he kept calling, he kept calling it his Gucci belt, but just as a joke. But, but it wasn't Gucci, but it was a designer belt, and he knew it. Yeah, so I think it is Chanel. And he got a dope ass Chanel belt. And he could not wait to rock to that dance. <laughs> and like it just, uh, it powered him through everything. You're like, I got this. I, I, I got that said, belt, though. I got this. Got this dope ass belt. So uh, homecoming, <clears throat> the, you know, the game was Friday. Uh, uh, our, our our game came through. You said with his family, so we all watched it. My son performed and stuff like that. And uh, was like, hey, yo, we'll hook with you tomorrow. Then we can take homecoming pictures. So we all linked up the next day to go take pictures of my kid. And I got him fresh dip. He got this fly little jacket. Like I said, Vanessa bought all that. Yeah. Not joking, not saying I gave Vanessa money back. No. Vanessa straight mom my kid on that one. And I respect her, respect the hell out of her for doing that for me and for him. So she, she, he got him all fresh dip. I got him the, I got him the haircut. You know what I'm saying? And he was—he was looking. He, he looked so grown. I don't even know what to do with it because I, I, cause I went to take these pictures of him. And I was like, yeah. "Holy cow, man!" One, they turned out really well. I kind of just you know pat myself on the back, like look at your look at your iPhone iPhone game. Because some people decided like, right, they was there with professional photographers, yeah, taking pictures at the same spot. We went to Lakewood Park. You know, it's lovely. It's got a good view of the whole and everything. I live in Lakewood, so whatever. Too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was amazing. Him and his homeboy went, and they they linked it with some of their other crew. And then and, uh, they chickens. They, they <laughs> straight up and down. My son ate chicken nuggets. His homeboy ate uh, McChickens. I ended up getting a little some chicken nuggets too, because whatever. They ate McDonald's before they went to Uncle, which I thought was just the realest shit ever. Until I'm pulling up toward McDonald's and I see all like people going in there like in they full hook yeah. up going to get it's the regular thing. People just go get some McDonald's and just chill out. It was that? Yeah, I remember the night I was supposed to go to prom, like I was working um I I had got fired from the first Wendy's I worked at. And I was work. I worked at another Wendy's for one night only, 
it was like a ton of people just coming in, like in tuxes and stuff. Like, can I get a Junior Bacon Cheeseburger? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I told this on the show before. I'm pretty. I'm fairly certain. Like, I'm like 99 percent sure, but I'll, I'll retell it again for those who don't know. I've been at this for five years. It's, yeah, some, yeah. Some, some people don't know. <laughs> uh, I didn't go to prom, and um, I could have gone to prom, but it wasn't like I asked someone to go to prom. It was like I had this friend. Uh, we, we went to middle school together, mm-hmm. and she moved out to Seven Hills, and she went to Normandy. And I moved. I ended up moving out to Parma Heights and went to Valley Forge. So it was like Parma has like three high schools. So it was you know they're all connected in a way. And um, it was one of those things where like she's like, oh, if we don't have a, like a date for prom, we should just go together. And I was like, yeah, no, because like I liked her back when we were in middle school, uh-huh. but then like she didn't feel the same way, and I didn't want to like. That was, like, my first foray into, like, I am not going to be into you and still you know and not be into me. And then, like, we continue doing this because, like, I don't want to live that life. I was too young to handle that kind of shit. Yeah. So when she's just like, oh, you going to be in my day at the prom? I was like, yeah, I can't. I got to go do something with my grandma. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have shit to do with my grandma. I just went over to my grandma's house and went to play video games and watch TV. You don't need yeah. games to play with your grandma. I didn't play them with my grandma. I, know, I, I played them by myself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, one of, it's funny because, like, to this day, not going to prom, like, never really, like, affected me in any way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't, it's not like a regret I have or anything because I didn't go to any school dances in high school. I never really cared. Uh, I went to a couple in middle school, and they, they were never anything for me but, like, anxiety. It was always people trying to push people on me that, like, I didn't really have any interest in talking to or whatever. I remember those days. Yeah, and so it was, like, never really enjoyable. So it's probably why when I got to high school and, like, I had the option of, like, just not going and not being a big deal because there were so many of us that, like, no one really fucking noticed, especially since I switched high schools. So no one knew who the fuck I was anyway. So it made it easier to just not go. Yeah, I remember um, this girl, I was... Loosely dating one girl, and like she had pretty much dropped out of school, and she, she we were supposed to go to prom together, and then another girl was like, "I go to I want to go to prom with you, uh, but you gotta break up with the other girl." I was like, "Okay," but we were gonna break up anyway because she dropped out of school and I didn't go to the <laughs> west side or anything like that. But so, I, any, but the other girl was like, nah, I'm okay. We're not going to go to prom together. I was like, all right. And I was like, I, I had an opportunity to make some money. I was like, I'm fine with that. Stack this dough. Yeah, so, because, like, I've never, uh, except for the six months we were laid off, I've never not had a job. Yeah. Like, since I've been, uh, like, 16 years old. Um, I was on, I didn't work for, like, two years in my early 20s. Yeah. I didn't really do anything. It was not a good time for me in retrospect. I probably should have been doing something because I, I dropped out of school yeah. and then I didn't work. I was literally just like a drain on my fam, on my mom and like my grandmother at that time. And I ballooned up to like really big, like damn near 500 pounds big. Well, maybe you were just going through some stuff and you could like don't realize that now. Well, I think like part of it was like one, they enabled me to do that yeah. for a long time. But then, too, it was like I was constantly having to help take care of my siblings, and then my, my stepmom had that in home daycare. So I was around kids all the fucking time. Yeah. And I think it wore on me in a way because it was like I, I was always like cutting the grass and, and having to do chores and, and, and all this kind of shit. And I know it sounds like I'm whining, but like when you were doing that shit, like young, like, man, like I told you, like I was in elementary school. I would get off the bus at like when I was eight, like eight years old. Yeah. Walk a few blocks home by myself, let myself in the house, and then just watch myself until like eight o'clock at night when my grandma would come home. So I'd be alone like for five hours by myself at eight years old. I have a question. I know you. I mean, you don't have kids yet, but just I, I was I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Like the shit that we did, I would not do, let my kid do it all. <laughs> right. I there was were a few times where I got jumped. Yeah, that, yeah, and I know. never and I never told uh, anybody. 
I just said that like I walked into a pole. It was like why I had a black eye. Like I never told anyone that anyone attacked me. That's terrible. Like, just imagine. Could you let Daniel Junior go through that? Fuck no. And this and it. So this is how we this is how we bring it back. Why? I didn't go to no dance in high school. Didn't talk to no ladies in high school. I was weird about. It. I was scared about. It. I was nervous. It was hard as what to do these things. And it's not that I regret it so so much, but it is it is whatever that the, the nearest feeling to regret and regrets next door neighbor give a damn is. Maury, it would have been nice if I would have went. Exactly. So I get. I'm not, I'm not making my kid do anything, but I'm definitely like strongly suggest, hey boy, make these moves because you might be regretful or regrets next door neighbor about these things yourself down the line. And. Me, like I said, I could have never went to prom or danced anyway. My mama just couldn't afford. I couldn't afford. I didn't have the money. I would didn't have the and I didn't have the the, the 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 gumption to go get a gig. I tried to get a job like a couple times in high school. One of them I got all the way through the process and then never just just never they never put me on the, on the schedule. And because I didn't have a way for them to contact me, no way they could holler me to get me. Because like I said, we ain't have a phone. We ain't have shit. We was poor, poor people. I don't think y'all don't. Yeah. I don't think y'all grasp the level of poor I'm talking about. And so. I bust my ass now as an adult. I bust my ass. Come on, guys. Y'all know what we do for a living. I type hard. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we're not typing that hard right now. <laughs> but I work, and I've worked yeah, shit, I'm really dragging ass today. I, I've been away from my desk way more than I've been at it. <laughs> you know, it, it seemed like, um, especially in these times like what's going on with our job, they either are real hard on you or it's like, oh, yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're talking to your buddy to just get laid off? I'm going to give you a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, shit. I, I got up to pee. Never made it there. And I was away from my desk for a half hour. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I want it. I want my children to be and live better and have better. So I kid got to get him a fancy ass belt. Pretty nice jacket. Went to the dance. We, as we are, his buddy was like, I'm a, can I come spend the night? I'm like, you good. I knew his one buddy was spending the night. But his other buddy was like, can I come spend the night? I'm like, hey, you good. He goes, can we go to my house right quick? I want to change because I ain't, I ain't in this suit. I'm like, cool. So I go to his house, sitting there in his driveway. As we sit in his driveway, some some chicks call up his, his other buddy, the one that, like who was going to spend the night. And it's like, what y'all doing afterwards? And they're like, let's go to Xander's house and kick it. They're like, we end up having, they end up having a little a little after party at my house. Oh, wow. And, and, and with girls and, with girls too? With girls and boys, yeah. Man. So. After the show, was the, uh, the party <laughs> and. But it went from, I mean, it, it goes from like, like I said, me, not even talking to chicks in high school, so I got there, to my son having house parties. Yeah. Well, like, that dinner I went to the other night where I talked about having the panini sandwich. Yeah. Uh, my buddy and his wife I guess I mean they're both my friends I just don't know how to classify it because I've known him since high school like yeah. whereas I've just known her since, since they got together yeah since he brought her around so yeah. but they're both my friends yeah um, they just had their first baby back in June when I went on that Cincinnati trip and uh, so they had me over for dinner for my birthday and just to catch up because I hadn't been over there in like two months and we were talking about um, kids and how like Things are different now for them than it was when we were growing up. Yeah. I was like, yeah, man, like, I get fucking emails now and, and no- notifications from the city of Parma that, like, school's closed because it's too hot. <laughs> I'm like, shit, when we were in school, it was one box fan for an entire classroom of, like, 30 kids. Yeah. I'm like, they didn't give a fuck. I'm like, so it's like, I'm torn because I'm like, we went through that struggle and... We should want better for our, our kids so that they don't have to do that shit that we did. Yeah. But then at the same time, I'm still fucking bitter about that shit. And I'm like, sack up, kid. Yeah, we all like, sweat sometimes. Like, it's that fine line between, like, character and suffering. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't want you to have to learn the hard lessons. I'd like you to learn the lessons. I don't know. I want my son to learn some hard lessons because he, um... I don't know. He right now he getting his ass beat by a fifteen month old. Sometimes you gotta sack up. Sometimes Anthony, and I know you listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned the hard lessons, yeah. and and the results of that is a hard edge on my that, that I that I have even to this day. I don't want that. I don't want them to have to have that. Yeah. And plus, like they life is. I mean. They, they mama died. I think my kids had the hard lesson taught to them. That's, that's very true. Okay, it's like, it's like, 
for the rest of the way, if I can make it as easy as I can, let me make it as easy as I can. But they they seem like when what they say when you have struggles early, you're often very successful later on in life. And and I and I hope I hope that is I hope that is the case. So also gave my kid his very first driving lesson of all time. Uh oh. Super hyped about this. I just needed to move the mood of the swagging up about six feet. <coughs> I was like, so I just come up to his ear and I put it to his ear. I'm like, hey, man, you know, if I say it too loud, his sister's going to freak out about it. What you going to let him drop? I'm like, hey, man, you want to you wanna help me move this focus up right quick? And he's like, his eyes get big and he's like, okay. I'm like, all right, here, I'm going to come with you. Like I said, don't, don't worry, I'm not sitting you in the car by yourself. <clears throat> I'm just going to sit next to you. So I'm like, I walk him through it. I'm like, all right, is the seat where you need to be? Two minute warning. Got you. Is the seat where you need to be? So now you got to get back. Yeah. Yeah, all right, no. All right, slide the seat up. Is that wheel where you need to be? No, I think I could be lower. Figure the wheel. I drop the wheel into his lap. I'm like, all right, where your feet go? He goes, one here, one here. I go, no. no <laughs> one foot. Just the one. And I go, only let you drive the clutch if you need that left one. Is everything in this one right here? I'm like, most of your car experience is going to be on that brake. So put your foot on that brake and push it down. Start the car up. Does that. And he's like, okay. I'm like, all right. Shift that bitch in the drive, all right? And he shifts in the drive. <laughs> And that car just whatever, no matter what, it's coming off the blocks. It's like roaring. And I'm like, that's why you hold that brake down, baby. And I just ease off of it. And he just like, let it glide up. I'm like, all right, that's good. Park it. Turn it off. I'm like, drive less number one. You just had it. Yeah, that, that building, the car, like, I guess, it, like, pretty much across the street is perfect for uh, for practicing driving. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. My grandmother took me to the cemetery. Can't kill anyone who's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> And, it, and it, cemetery is like perfect for that kind of shit because everyone's moving slow, so you're not overwhelmed. Yeah. And like the big cemeteries, it's like its own roadway, yeah, just it's curves, own... stop signs, all that shit. So yeah. it's got everything you need to kind of get a feel for it. Yep. It's like the beginner course before you get on the actual road where they crank up the speed. Yeah. So there you have it, people. That's what's going on in our world. Just a little, mm-hmm. little updates here and there, so forth and so on. That's the homie uh, Taylor Two Six. I've introduced him once, but now we're gonna look, we're gonna let, let go out with him. It's Lunchbox Two Zero Nine Nine. It's the homeboy. Our missing man is the real ODP. Uh, we'll be, he'll be back on mic uh, here Sunday. We got some we got some things. Got some things we stirring up. Don't you worry about it. I am the Interstate 713. You have just been podcasting. I know you loved it. Or liked it. Peace. Mm-hmm. We just thought it was okay. Hey, what happened to you? You used to be beautiful.